I think the emptiness happens when you get to the place that you thought would make you happy and you discover it doesn't. Or the emptiness happens when you continually strive to get to that place and don't quite reach it. It's two different kinds of emptiness, but it's emptiness nevertheless. I remember in my early years as a pastor, my drive to preach the best sermon every week I possibly could, and I would have people come up to me after the sermon saying, oh, that was great, Pete. How are you gonna to top that next week? And I would just think, oh no. And I would be working all week long and all day Saturday, and I'd be there late Saturday night and early Sunday morning, and, and I was just dying. It's exhausting having to succeed. And uh, what I didn't realize is, um, as that was my focus for so long, and that was my drive for so long, that I, I had just worn myself out. When I was a little guy and people asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? Um, at first, it was a fireman, um, and then it was a policeman. Um, but then around 10 or 12, my answer became very different. Every time someone asked me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said the same thing. I said, I want to be the best. And they would look at me and say, the best at what? And I would say, I don't care. It doesn't matter. I just want to be the best at something. <laughs> I think it came from the fact that I liked attention. And I noticed that the kids who were really good at things got more attention and the kids who were less so. And so at the core of who I was, it was really about people thinking highly of me and just feeding off that attention. There was one basketball game when I scored 52 points and I was the best player on the court that night. And I remember going back in the locker room and people patting me on the back and getting changed and going out and everything was still the same as it was before I scored 52 points. And I thought, dang, it isn't as good as I thought it would be. It didn't meet the need that I felt I had. And so I needed to find something that was or someone that was. Christ is first in my life because he is magnificently first in everything. And it's simply my recognition of who he is. He is first because he's better than me at everything. Anything I can try to do, he can do it better. He's first because he passionately loves me. And there's nothing I can do to make him love me more. There's nothing I can do to make him love me less. He loves me perfectly right now. So he is first in my life because he's passionately crazy about me, whether I'm doing well or not, whether I'm performing beautifully or not, whether I just sinned miserably or not. He's nuts about me. He's crazy about me. How can someone like that not be first? When, when they when they make you first, he made me first in his life. He went to the cross for me. He thoroughly sacrificed himself for me. He made me first. And when I come to grips with that depth of love, with his passion for me, um, it seems incongruent to allow anything else to be first. He's got to be first. I'm Pete Briscoe, and I am second.